Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so you can be part of my notification squad. That way we can chop it up in the comments later. Alright, so in this video I wanted to talk about Iron Man's Thorbuster armor. So now, this is the first time he's built a suit that's merged with Asgardian magic with the intent and purpose of going up against Thor. And this won't be the last time that he mixes the two, but when he does this for the first time, he mainly does it because he feels like he has no other choice. So to give you a little backstory on why they're even facing off, because I don't want you to just think Thor is just being a jerk, because to him he's not. And this is taking place in the main 616 continuity, just to be clear. Because a little while back we also talked about a face off between Iron Man and Thor, but that was in the Ultimate 1610 universe. And I'll leave you guys a link to check out that one, but the armor that he used in that video was built to face off with Ultimate's Hulk. He just happened to use it against Thor because it was the biggest, toughest suit he had at the time. But when we see them come face to face here, it's because a group of people in Sokovia have formed a religion based around Thor. And this is mainly because people have known his history for some time. They know his name, they know his history, they know the legends of Thor, and then to see him actually come down, become a hero, and join the Avengers and do all these great things before their eyes, they start a religion around him. So then when these people are persecuted and they cry out to their god, who is Thor, their cries while they're being murdered and persecuted are heard by Heimdall. And Heimdall, you know, he can hear everything. He checking the stock markets. He hear people ordering their food. He checking the new iPhone leaks. Because you already know he got to keep his ear to the street, even if it look like a rainbow. But pretty much Heimdall gets word up to Thor. And Thor sends Baldur the Great and the Warriors 3 to go down and take care of it. And that's just his initial response. It's a Sokovan military. They're as guardians. To them, it's light work. In the Sokovian military, like I said, they really don't even stand a chance. Like, Thor hasn't even stepped in yet, and these three or four Asgardians are holding off an entire army. And even though it's not like a mass invasion or a takeover at this point, it does catch the attention of the headquarters of the United States Department of Defense. And when they see this, they call Tony over ASAP. And they want answers, because for them, they're expecting the worst. And it's not necessarily like the Pentagon has a direct communication to Asgard, so they can say anything to Thor or ask him any questions. And when this particular incident happened, Thor had been gone for a little while. He recently took on the title as Allfather with Odin's recent death. So he's got a lot to deal with, and throughout this story arc, you can really see that weighing heavy on him. But the Pentagon don't care about all that. They just see this as a threat, and they're prepared for the worst. But Tony tells him, look, I'm welcome in Asgard, I'll just go up there, I'll talk to him, and we'll smooth it out. But it really doesn't go that smooth at all. Thor genuinely believes that what he's doing is the best solution. And on top of that, not only does he want to keep the Asgardians over there, but he's also going to go there himself, presumably extending his reign over Sokovia and any other country that would disagree with his terms. But then Tony's like, what about Latveria, which is right next door? And for those of you that are unfamiliar, that's where Dr. Doom's castle is. But Thor let Tony know if Doom got any problems, he can catch these hands too. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But as soon as Tony leaves, he gets a call from none other than Victor Von Doom. And that's like the strangest time to call too. I know Iron Man was flying around thinking like, dang man, we was just talking about you. But from here forward, Doom establishes this communication with Tony. Like he's been watching from afar off, seeing everything that's going on. But with the circumstance escalating with Thor touching down, and it pretty much seeming like he's getting in position to take over the world, Doom actually gives Tony some suggestions on how to handle the situation. And it's not necessarily because Doom is just a super nice guy. Doom is like one of the most misunderstood villains like ever. I mean, he's not a simple character by far. A lot of his methods can be considered ruthless hands down, but most of which have been an attempt to gain power and save his mother. But regardless of how you view this character or whichever way you may see his motivations, like if Thor is the god of thunder, then Doctor Doom would have to be the god of finesse. Because he has finessed his way into getting the upper hand in so many situations. And that's really what he brings Tony here to tell him. He's like, look, I don't mean to brag, but I beat the Silver Surfer. And I'm gonna tell you how to beat Thor. And right there is where he plants the idea in Tony's mind and using the same power that Thor has against him. Because that's how he beat the Silver Surfer and then later used the Silver Surfer's power to beat the Fantastic Four. And Tony plans to execute the same concept. And what he does is take a meteor fragment that Thor had left some time ago and he uses it as a power source for a new suit that he designed modeled after the Destroyer. So now you guys probably remember the Destroyer from the first Thor film. Where at the end Thor got his powers back, hit him with a hammer a couple times, whisked him up in a tornado, and that was it. See, that was just in the movie. But in the comics, it, it didn't go down quite like that. Because if we go back into your earlier issues with your Journey into Mystery Thor series, Thor got his ass handed to him by the Destroyer. I mean, he was catching Mjolnir and throwing him back at Thor. And as a matter of fact, before Hela even shocked the world, air quotes, in the Ragnarok trailer when she broke Mjolnir, the Destroyer was actually the first one to destroy, no pun intended, Mjolnir in the comics. Because the actual Destroyer was way more powerful than what we saw in the film. 
and substantially more powerful than the suit that Iron Man put together. And that's mainly because Odin designed this to battle Celestials. And with that, he made it capable of containing vast amounts of the gods' energies. And those gods being the Sky Fathers, Odin, Brahma, and Zeus. And those three together, that's a lot of power wrapped up into one. Mjolnir didn't have a chance. But a couple issues later in Journey to Mystery, they ended up fixing Mjolnir, so he's all good. But after Iron Man gets the suit ready, he gets it powered up, he heads straight over to Sokovia. And he takes the fight directly to Thor. And he wants to make sure that Thor knows with this suit and with this power that he's a threat. Because aside from Thor's perspective, which you can't totally blame him for, he's avenging the death of people who are dedicated to him. Like, these people died, killed by soldiers of their own country. And the way Thor sees it, he's coming down to protect the rest of them and rule over them from a seat of protection, of course, but from the perspective that this is a need of the people. You know, it's not like some insane lust for power where he just has the rule and just has to have everything. It's not like that. He genuinely feels like he's their god and he has to do whatever it takes to protect his people and keep them from unlawfully being slain by the government. But on the flip side, you can understand Tony as well because he's not just going to let some dude from Asgard come down and just rule the world, or anybody for that matter. But as far as his Thorbuster suit and his capabilities, aside from his repulsor blast, but we do see that it's capable of deflecting Mjolnir and absorbing Asgardian magic or energy. And Tony mentions that it takes that energy it absorbs and uses it to repower the suit. And that's even more power in addition to the meteor fragment that Thor gave Tony originally that he's using to power the suit. But if you ask me, I feel like that was one of the biggest flaws of this suit design. Because we'll see in a little while, like the power that the suit is holding and the power that is given out and the beating that is taken from Thor. Like with time we begin to notice that the dexterity of this suit isn't on par with the energy that is holding or the beating that is taking. And in this fight, Iron Man is really giving him all he has. Like, Thor is not just Thor because of Mjolnir. He's insanely powerful because he's the son of Odin. That's in his blood. You can knock his helmet off, his armor and his cape may break away, but he's still Thor. Iron Man, on the other hand, he's just a man in a suit. And although he has the grit to continue fighting and keep going on, Cap's like, boy, stop. And he literally tells him, Tony, shut up and turn your brain back on. Because this is Thor that we're dealing with here. And granted, it's kind of an isolated situation. It hasn't escalated so far for the whole world to get involved. But Cap's main point is like, you got to understand when to quit. Like, you came out with your Thor buster and got busted. Like, sit down. Be humble, you know what I'm saying? But in their case, the only saving grace really was Thor coming to his senses. Like, had he kept going, it would have clearly been a wrap for these two. But when Thor throws that heavy blow that puts a dent in Cap's shield, he immediately pulls back. And I feel like it kind of ties back into the older issue. Like, they don't discuss it right here, but in that older issue of Journey into Mystery that we were looking at where Thor had Mjolnir broken, I feel like in a way he went back to that same place of devastation when he broke Cap's shield, or when he put a dent in Cap's shield. Because it's immediately at that point where he pulls back and then he bangs out the dent for him. And keep in mind, like I said, there's nothing that really said that he's thinking that, but it just feels like he's remembering that place in time where Mjolnir was broken, and then it kind of brings him to his senses with everything else. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on the Thorbuster armor. Personally, I don't think it did much Thor busting, but this one was a nice try. And if you guys want, I could do a video on the next armor that he made in Asgard. Or not Asgard, it was like Svarthovim or something like that. But that other armor was a lot closer to the Destroyer. But I got links up here at the end if you want to check out my other video with Thor versus Iron Man. Iron Man using the Ultimate Hulkbuster suit. And Thor is passing out because of what happened between Valkyrie and Loki. But y'all take it easy, and I'll catch you on the next one. Alright, later.